Good afternoon YouTube, uh, it is the afternoon in the UK and I was supposed to be at a car show today um, but unfortunately it's been cancelled so a bit of a loose end to be honest. I was in Skegness last night watching a great show, an 80s night with a good friend of ours called Ellie and stayed over and then drove back this morning. Um, but yeah, because the car show has been cancelled, a bit of a bit of a shame really because yeah, a bit of a loose end going on. So. Because there's nothing much happening in the UK today, because it's windy as hell, let me just show you around, it's so windy, which is again why a lot of the, the things have been cancelled today. Um, I thought I'd just um, have a little bit of a waffle about the S3. So, let me just show you what I mean. So, this is my 2007 S3, it's an 8P. There we go, let's just turn you around, sorry about the camera work. And I don't think I've had a good sort of walk around and just explain you know, about the car. Um, I'm not going to give you too much detail because you know it's just a, a quick oversight video. So the car, as I say, is an 8 piece, a 2007. Obviously, got a private plate on it because I'm made all like that. Audi drivers have to have private plates because you know we're all bad drivers and um, you know we all get criticised for things we do. Um, changes to it now. Before I got it, the back lights were changed. I think they're the facelift model they call it. Um, the wheels are also off an Audi TT and I like the wheels, they're powder coated and they've got a great finish on let me just get in um, sorry about the wind noise, it's probably going to be horrendous at the moment but they have like a, um, I don't know how to describe it, it's a chrome shield on it and they're very shiny the only downside is, as you can see the tyres are slightly stretched so they're 255 tyres which is standard for these but um, these are I think a 7.5J off the top of my head Somebody will correct me, probably nine and a half J. You'll, you'll find out on the internet, I'm sure. Um, but the only problem is the rims do stick out a lot, and as you can see, I'm careless and I have caught them a, a few times. The car is quite wide. Um, I know it's supposed to be a small hatchback, but when you physically look at the car, and quite a wide car, um, and the stance of them is quite wide. If you look down the side, you can see there's quite a bit sticks out with the wheels. Um, Nothing that's obviously going to cause problems with the MOT or anything like that because they are covered over. But yeah, you've got to be careful of the wheels. Um, if you've got a standard one of these, then everything's fine. Um, it needs a good clean as well because, as I say, just come back to Skegness, which is not the cleanest of places. So obviously, it had the TT wheels on it. Um, basically, there's not a whole heap done to it. Um, the grill, I believe, is original. Um, you can see it's uh, anything I've kind of done is it breaks all the way around. Um, a few little detail stickers because we all love our stickers. That one down there, which uh, it glows in the sunlight, which is really nice. And some little S3 stickers on the back calipers there. And they actually match the front ones, which come as standard, which are there. So, there you go, that's a quick walk around. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, just go on the inside because then obviously the wind noise is going to be less I hope um, so the inside um, as I mentioned before it has a sunroof that's something I really wanted when I bought one of these I know it seems probably a bit of a waste to people but it is quite nice um, you can close it in so if the sun's coming through it doesn't get too annoying but I quite like sunroofs and it's the tilt slide as well and just makes a bit of difference when it's you know when it's not warm enough to have the aircon on you get that open it's not too much wind noise it's not too bad at all um, I upgraded the stereo to the navigation plus because it had the original one in it which I think was just the navigation it's called and uh, it's obviously got the flat bottom steering wheel which uh, a lot of people like they they're strange at first when you first get them and you start running your hand round and you feel that flat spot, it's, it's quite weird, but once you get used to them, they kind of make sense, because as you get in and out the car, if you put them in the right place, which I haven't, let me just demonstrate, um, I've got to be quick and turn the radio off, as YouTube will shout at me, so yeah, we'll get that turned off, when you've got the, the wheel flat, you've got a lot more room, okay, a lot more room, let's just get that down as well, so obviously this car has got the climate control, which most have, and the heated seats as well. And the seats are black and tan, which I think really go well with this car. Um, thank you. That's the, that's, I'm going to come on to that because that's one of the annoyances of this car. 
uh, S3 mats and then inside you know just dash cam and Alcantara not Alcantara what do they call it anyway a black headline there, there's a name for it but I can't remember what it is at the moment but there you go that's a little look around the inside so yeah annoyances I'm gonna make this short and sweet um, annoyance one nope we don't want that on annoyance one is and everybody that's either owned an ARD there we go or an S3 will be ultimately annoyed by that horrible bong um, so when you connect the Bluetooth to your phone um, when you first started up and no, I can't do it. go away there we go I'm trying to turn it off so you can actually see it when it strikes up but I don't want YouTube to start getting me we'll come back to that anyway but yeah the annoying bong that one <laughs> really Andy what were you thinking it's not necessary you don't need it when you've paired your Bluetooth device up it's going to connect every time you don't need an annoying bong you really 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 don't um, so that's one of the annoyances of this car the other annoyance and go on any forum and you'll find this out is the handbrake so I've got the center console in here which is very nice to put your sunglasses in and everything else and it will go out the way like that but it's quite nice to rest your elbow on especially when you're changing gear if you haven't got it there you know it's it's a bit of a pain um, and it does go certain positions so you can have it all the way down oops up a little bit more up a little bit more but when you've got it down your handbrake okay you can get it but the trouble is when you pull it you're kind of trapping your wrist there and it's really awkward to do and sometimes if you get it in the right place you can strain your wrist which is not good um, so that's a bit of a design flaw um, a slightly annoying thing right I'm going to try and go back to the radio and turn it on um, in theory it should come up with the S3 logo which uh, you can program those in with there we go the S3 logo you can program that in with VACOM and you can change the front screen it's not that difficult to be honest loads of stuff online to take, uh, do that but yeah that bong and it's going to happen at any time now so it bongs to connect your phone um, my phone's actually inside the house there you go that that you can't change you can't go into the menus, you can't go into VADCOM, you cannot do anything to get rid of that annoying bong. Um, I wish you could, but you can't. Simple as that. The other slight annoyance of the car, there's not many, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, not many at all. Is the doors. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but at the moment, I've got the door open there. And for a change, it's staying there. What you find though is, Audi's got this bit just about there. And anybody that owns an Audi will probably feel exactly the same as me. It doesn't take much for the door to close on you. So you can open it up, you can get to that point, and then all of a sudden, and it's not going to do it now because I want it to, all of a sudden it will come and close on you again. Okay? Especially if you're on a bit of a hill like my driveway is. Okay? There you go. It's very easy for it to come back. And that's really annoying if so you, you sort of get out like that and then it starts closing on you not a major thing I know but slightly annoying um, over annoyances <sighs> to be honest not that many um, the driving position you've got a lot of adjustment in the steering wheel goes up and down comes in and out where you rake and, well there you go there's the door <laughs> wing comes up and it shuts it for me um, so not much in the way of annoyances and you can adjust everything but the seating position I don't know if it's just me or what the pedals feel a long way away and because I've got a, a high performance clutch in this the pedal literally comes in just off the floor so I've got to put the pedal all the way down to disengage the clutch which is good because it means it's got plenty of bike plenty of travel but I can never get the seat in the right position um, you've got a lever down here that you pull and that, that raises you and sort of tilts the back of the seat up but if you do that you feel quite high in the car I'm not a tall person let me just scan around but you kind of feel quite high in the car so I like to feel lower so you can push that and hopefully you can see I'm actually going down but when you do that it now feels like the front of the seat is pointed up 
and the back of the seat's pointed down. So it makes it quite tough on your legs just there to now push the clutch down. To get round that, you can use this lever here and you can, you can way, hey, very difficult one handed, you can pull the seat forward. So now I've got plenty of room there, but my knees now feel, you know, quite high. You know, and the seat's in such a position where it's kind of forcing my legs upwards. Um, so I can never seem to get it in a good position. So again, if I if I raise the seat up, it does sort of level it out. But now, as you can see, I'm quite high in the car. And um, again, it's, we'll go back. That's going to sound awful on the video, I know. But I never seem to get to a position where my arms are in a good bendy position, which they should be. And yet my legs kind of, I'm, I'm stretching a bit to get them. Uh, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just weird, I don't know, but there you go, that's something I've found. Um, annoyances, well, other than that, not too much. Um, good things, and there's many, many, many good things, is obviously the performance and everything else, we know that, but this one has got cruise control. Now, most people go, what do you want cruise control for? Waste of time. When you're sitting on a dual carriageway at the same speed following traffic you stick that on and it's brilliant you can um, okay you press that button in there to arm it that disengages it switches it off but if you're going at speed and you think right I want to sit at this speed you press set and then if you want to go a little bit faster you just do that and that'll increment you by one mile an hour if you want to slow down you do that so I find myself on long journeys setting it and then just tweaking it slightly by using up or down motion and I find that really good um, good and bad at the same time this has also got auto lights auto wipers the auto light side absolutely brilliant if it's raining or if it's dull they will come on and it works really well it feels good the auto wipers not so much um, the auto wipers seem to if you're standing still and they're on and you set off you would imagine as soon as you start the car up if the windscreen is wet it would swipe doesn't seem to and the wife's got the convertible as well and it does exactly the same it's only when you start moving that it seems to want to put the wipers on and um, it just doesn't feel very intuitive the one good thing about them though if it is raining hard and they're going at full pelt or position one and you come up to a junction or a roundabout you actually stop take it out of gear put your handbrake on they'll go into intermittent so again good and bad um daytime running lights we've got those down there they're switched on and obviously you can yeah, tune the, the brightness of the dials by using that one. This one here is your, I'm going to say it as your courtesy lights. Um, I think Audi call it something else. Um, go follow home lights or something like that. Don't exactly know. But basically you switch that on and it leaves your headlights on as soon as you want. Well, let me start, let me go back a bit. You leave that on, when you start uh, stop the car, the lights go off as soon as you open the door the lights come on again and they basically let you go in the house with the lights on which is great if you park towards the house um, but I've got lights that come on in the house anyway so I don't really need them but all they tend to do and the same I drive on a slight hill they just shine into the neighbors front living room <laughs> which um, can't be nice for them um, so that's a bit of a a bit of a dicky feature that I don't use personally but for some people it could be very good um, the steering wheel controls on the steering wheel work very well I don't know if it's me or if it's something in the past where I've used steering wheel controls but it always feels like this one on this side should be the volume but it's not it, uh, it changes channels so if we've got a CD on it will change uh, it will change to the next track um, and I can probably show it on the radio so it will actually scroll up and down at the moment for you know, whichever radio station we want which works well and we press it and that's basically the selection um, the mode button that's when you've got your Bluetooth enabled and you want to scroll through your phone book so you press mode it goes into phone book and you can see there there's it's changing to yeah you know, everybody and I can scroll up and down blah 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 like that uh, on this side that one's voice command and I haven't really played with it too much and don't really know what it does but it kind of Radio, it does things and usually says pardon. Pardon. Just like that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, love. Um, so 
I'm sure you can do lots of good things with that. Important I've, command for the radio yeah, are right. FM. Yeah, FM, all right, love, yeah. With, specific frequency, yeah, you for see. example, 94.8 megahertz. Yeah, see, that Next can, station, Yeah, that, yeah, station. yes. See, that could get really annoying very quickly too. Um, and then this one is for your volume. It speaks for itself, really. Um, and mute is in the, in the middle there. So, that is a little tour around. That's a little look on the inside. Um, things I love as well. S3 badges everywhere. We love an S3 badge, and they're all over the dash as well. You've got them there. So yeah, it's um, no, it's it's one of those cars that you either love or hate. And if you love them, you put up with the the slight idiosyncrasies that Audi offer too. But as I said in previous videos, it's a car I've aspired to. It's a car I've always wanted, and it's a car I enjoy driving. So your choice really um, hope this has been informational to some people if you're looking to buy an S3 certainly um, go for a test drive consider them um, things to look out for don't worry too much about high mileage look at service history I think I've said that before service history is more important than the miles they've done um, if they haven't been serviced regularly and I'm gonna say out of service schedule as well so um, I don't believe in servicing engines every 10,000 miles not for a sports car not for a, a hybrid car like these um, so I personally do it about every 5,000 miles if they're done about every 8,000 miles that's probably a good place to be if it's every 15 or so thousand miles you gotta ask yourself what states that oil in because I know when I change mine after 5,000 miles it's, it's black yeah so yeah look for a good service history um, and give it a good test drive if it's making knocks bangs crackles stuff you don't like stuff you you know whines as well from the either the Heldex unit at the back or the transfer box anything like that walk away there's plenty out there um, they're not a car that's going to be easy to repair yourself if you've got no knowledge and they're not a car that's going to be cheap to repair if you haven't got the knowledge and you're taking them to any garage if you're taking them to Audi you better have deep pockets anyway that's it that's been my Saturday morning chat about the S3. Uh, again, this is supposed to be a video about the car show. <laughs> In fact, maxi car show, but unfortunately, because of the weather, it's been cancelled. Completely understandable. Um, safety comes first, obviously. Uh, and where the area is, um, it would not either be nice or safe to run a car show in that area. Um, but it's a shame things like that happen. Next weekend, um, hopefully unless the weather puts pay to that again uh, we'll be going to a place I've been to in the past I'm not going to give too much away but it's a place where supercars hang out on a regular basis and it's a very lovely place to be uh, so look at the past videos and I'm sure you can work it out but that's next weekend so hopefully going to get loads of videos and again hope this has been helpful um, if you like what I do like and subscribe if you don't like what I do fair enough you know this isn't a profession for me it isn't a living it's just me talking about things in general doing things in general some of it may be useful some of it may not that's life anyway youtube thanks for watching catch you later